on to the early Americas. There were many different tribes in the early Americas before they were invaded by the Europeans, um, but we're going to focus on three of them. So hold on, these are some pretty unusual groups. Now before we get into those three tribes, I want to make sure that you understand some of the terminology about area and land mass, and it can be a little bit confusing. Some people don't know this, but North America is is actually everything that is not South America. So if you look on this map where you see Colombia and Venezuela down there at the very bottom right hand corner, that that's South America. Everything north of that, Panama, Costa Rica, all the islands in the Caribbean, Greenland, Ru um, Russia, the Arctic Circle, all of that is considered North America. So, and, and again, it does include Greenland, which is the largest island in the world. So North America together, when you put all that together, is the third largest continent on the planet. It's way more than most people think. They think North America is basically the United States and Canada, but it's not. It actually starts down there on, um, after or by Colombia, not including a Colombia. All right, so what is Central America? Central America is the, the northernmost part, most borderline of Mexico. See that gray area? And it goes all the way down until you hit Colombia. So all of that is Central America. Okay, hopefully I haven't confused you yet, but I might this, I might now, okay? Mesoamerica is even different. Mesoamerica is a group of people that are joined by culture and agriculture. So it, it, it's really hard to draw the line here, but it's about the middle part of Mexico to the most northern part of Costa Rica. Those people tend to have a very common culture and they definitely have a very common agriculture. So even though there's not an actual border, like a country border that determines Mesoamerica, it's kind of in the middle of Central America. So hopefully you're not totally confused yet. The easiest one of all is South America. Easy peasy. It is Colombia, Venezuela, and everything south of that. So the entire continent, you know, Chile, all those places, that is South America. Okay, hopefully your mind is not blown and, and you stay along with me. If not, you can listen to this section again. I know it's just riveting and you can't wait to hear it again. So let's start with the Mayans. The Mayans live in Mesoamerica, also known as Middle America or Central America. Um, they are located in the Yucatan Peninsula. So if you need to go back to uh, the previous recording, uh, section of the recording, and look at it in a much larger scale, it's really easy to pull out the Yucatan Peninsula. So again, it's in Central America. These guys are part of Mesoamerica, and the Mayans live in the rainforest. So classical period for these guys, 300 to 900 AD approximately. Now these guys were um, very much like the European people that we've already talked about. So they had many, many city-states. We're not sure exactly how many they had. Uh, researchers are still c uncovering them. Presently we have about 50 and we have come to the understanding that each one was ruled by a king. So a um, monarchical rule and each one had anywhere between 5,000 and 50,000 citizens. So we're estimating and again this is just an estimate because we have not uncovered all the city states but we're guessing they had about 2 million people. Okay, so remember, city-states, we talked about that when we were talking about the Greeks and the Romans. Um, this is a, a centralized area with a common ruler, which would be that king. So they're all Mayan, just like the Greeks were all Greek, but their city-states may have been very different from one another, and they had their own individual, individual kings ruling them. So they use pyramid style buildings. They are um, not exactly like the Egyptians. They have a lot of things that are in common. You can see that they don't have that peak. They're not perfect like the Egyptian uh, pyramids are with that perfect triangle at a perfect point, but they do use pyramids. So some scientists, some, 
believe that somehow, some way, these guys are descendants of the Egyptians. Is that true? Nothing I'm going to tell you in this unit is absolutely positively true. It's all educated guesses. So you can make up that you think they're aliens. I have students do that all the time. Aliens did it. Maybe they did. Now their most famous city is Chichen Itza. And this is uh, actually a picture that a friend of mine, this is one of the places on the plane that I haven't been yet and I really want to go, um, but a friend of mine went and she took some pictures for me. So you can see it does look uh, Egyptian-ish. There are lots of mysteries about the Mayan people, but this one I think baffles scientists more than any of them, more than anything. The 1,000 columns. So at the at the foot of one of the larger pyramids, there are exactly 1,000 columns. They're evenly spaced from each other, and you can see from the picture, it's not like that area could have been used for entertainment because the columns kind of get in the way. So it wasn't like a coliseum type event where people came and gathered but we can't figure out what it was was it some type of sporting event um who knows maybe it was like a grand hide and seek thing where you hid behind the columns who knows but they are exactly evenly spaced from one, one another exactly 1000 columns and they used to all be exactly the same height so it could be religious it could be athletic we have no idea now if you look at their stuff up close, again it does look kind of Egyptianish, the fact that they have a pyramid, but there also seems to be some Asian and even Indian st style of artwork all kind of mixed in together. So who knows, maybe they are aliens, who knows, but it is definitely a mixture of different cultures from across the world really. Now they were very good builders and you can see how tightly fit the bricks are with one another. I mean, these these buildings are basically indestructible. Excellent architects. And again, here is a more up close of that, the different type of artwork that they had. Um, some of it's missing, I, I know, so it's kind of hard to tell what it is. But we think this was actually one of their gods um, that they celebrated. And he's part man, part animal. You can see his feet at the bottom. He has that sideways pose like Egyptians tended to do with human beings, but it still has kind of that Indian look to it, maybe an Asian, uh, Chinese, Japanese kind of look to it. It just seems to be a mixture of a little bit of everything. So again, just another mystery. And here is uh, one of the towers where they are, one of the pyramids that they used for uh, religious purposes so you would go to well we think you could go to the top and um, do some practices that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute where the king would do certain rituals in front of the people um, to show his loyalty to the gods so we think that this one was actually a pretty significant structure used by the king and again you have more of those figures, dragon looking type thing. Doesn't that look like something that you would find in the Chinese New Year parade kind of stuff? Yeah. So inside this beautiful, beautiful pyramid, you have this natural spring. Yes, you can swim in it. Um, this is one of the things I'm dying to go do. So this is actually one of the pictures that my friend took. All these are again. So when she was there, they, you're invited to go swim in the swimming hole. Uh, no one reached the bottom while she was there. So I don't know if we know how deep it is, but I don't, I don't know. I think I'll be a little bit afraid of that. And here's a better shot of it. So she's up above looking down in the hole. Um, I don't think you can jump from the hole because it looks pretty tall, but she's above taking pictures of all the people swimming down below. Isn't that beautiful? Just gorgeous. Now their economy is based on agriculture and trade. So their plant beds are created on these hillside terraces that they carved out to make flat surfaces for their garden. And you can see like it's it's all these little platforms so they don't have to worry about the rain coming in and completely washing away their crops. That's not going to happen even though they're living in the rainforest because it's terraced. And so 
that way the crops will stay stable. You're not going to have mudslides and things like that. These guys could grow everything they needed. They really did not need to mingle with other tribes in the area because they grew everything basically that they needed. Now one of the things that we can thank them for is chocolate. Uh, we don't think they actually had currency. We think they used cocoa beans as currency when they did want desire to trade with somebody else and of course cocoa beans is chocolate but we think that chocolate was actually money and that we're talking the nasty chocolate back then you know no sugar added to it but I don't know what they made with it but they were willing to use it as money and people were willing to take it as money so chocolate's been around for a really long time now let's learn a few more things about these guys that sets them apart from the other tribes that were in North and South America at this time. So the, the Mayans are polytheistic. You've heard that across all of time that we've been talking about for the entire semester. So that's not new. Um, but here's the difference. They believe that there was a God for everything. And I mean everything. Every crop, birth, death, rain, lightning, some gods were good, some gods were evil, according to the Mayan belief. So to them, they truly believed that every day, as the day changed, a new god sat on the throne to govern them. So they had to be very, very careful about what they did on certain days. And so they started taking, they started to create a very, very special calendar that told them well, well, well into advance what God would be sitting in that ruling chair on what day because you didn't want some God who was anti-child to be on the seat the day that you gave birth. You didn't want some God who was anti-love to be on the throne the day that you got married because your marriage would be doomed. And so the Mayans created this very, very intricate calendar that went on way, way, way into the future to try and determine what God was sitting where. They had that many gods. So, I mean, think of everything there is in the world everything there is in the world if each one had their own god then that's a whole lot of gods taking turns sitting in the seat of power so to make the gods very happy they practice something called bloodletting now this is the thing that the king went and did at the top of the um, pyramid that i showed you so it was most often royalty that was asked to do this bloodletting most often for the Mayans, it was self bloodletting. Um, we'll get to what they did to other people in a minute, but the king and other royal figures would go to the top of the tower and they would stand on a metal plate and they would take this long, long metal shaft and they would run it through their tongue. They're doing this themselves. They would run it through their tongue all the way down through their genitals and the blood would drip on the plate and then when the plate was full the king could remove the rod he would step away from the plate and the the plate filled with blood would be dumped onto the fire to sacrifice it to the gods yeah don't think i want to be a mayan king uh, it wasn't just men though women had to do it as well women had two separate rods one that they would run through their own tongue and another that they would run sideways through their genitals. So again, bloodletting, if you, if you have the most powerful people in the kingdom doing it, wouldn't that appease the gods the most? So makes you look at the leaders of these, play, these people in a whole different light, right? Awfully brave people. Now, they did also sacrifice people and, and we, we know that because of this wall that was found. Wall of human heads was found in the 50 city states of the Mayans. So we think that their bones were very often just thrown into sinkholes and eventually swallowed by the earth. And that we think that these people were used as sacrifices to appease the gods that were in charge of a good harvest for each individual vegetable that was grown so the, the whole thing boils down to this the self bloodletting is the big 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 thing but everybody's sacrificing people back then they're sacrificing people and animals 
um, to appease these gods. So this isn't like they were bloodthirsty, horrible people. It's just the way of the time. So another cool fact, I guess you could say, about the Mayans is that they played basketball. It may have even been them that created the first version of basketball. Now you can see the net here is one thing that made their version very, very different. The net is going to be sideways and it's much, much taller than we have. Think about a, you know, a basketball player that goes up for a shot and he grabs the basket and dunks the ball. You're not going to grab a basket on this court way too high. So where do they get the balls from? The balls are human heads hey, it saves you having to blow it up when the air goes out, right? So where do they get the human heads? It's the losers. So two teams play, the losing team, they all lose their head, and there you have a whole bunch of balls for the next game. And that is Mayan basketball. Yep, don't think I want to be a Mayan king. Don't think I want to be an athlete in, Maya, in the Maya world either. So there were experts among all the Mayans in math and astrology, and these guys helped to create two separate calendars, very, very accurate calendars. Now, one of them is used to plant the crops um, um, because they're basing it on the seasons, that kind of thing. The other one is going to be all about those gods. So when, what god is going to be in the seat of, the pa a seat of power when I want to fight an enemy, when I want to crown a new king? So they didn't want to take it, any chances that they were doing the wrong thing on the wrong day because the wrong god would be ruling and frown on this event. And so everything was predicted by a specific time well into the future until every god they could think of had been used up. And then guess what? the calendar stopped. It was supposed to start all over again. But modern people got all freaked out and, and said, oh my God, the Mayan calendar, a calendar has ended. It ends in 2012. And that must mean the world is going to end in 2012. No, they thought of every God they could think of. They had used them all. And then whoever was alive when time ran out on that calendar was supposed to recreate it. But we were too stupid to know that. We thought the world was going to end and the Mayan people had predicted it. And there truly were people in 2012 sitting around waiting to die because the Mayans predicted it. Silly, 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 silly. Now, Mayans had their own writing system, and the, the images that they used to write with were called glyphs. They had about 800 of them, and theirs is a mixture. Sometimes it meant a, a glyph meant a whole word. Sometimes it was just a syllable, and they had to put multiple ones together to create a, a whole word. Um, they didn't have a source for paper, so what they wrote on was tree bark, which means that not a lot of it has survived, but what we did have received what we have dug up out of the ground is um, it's pretty obvious at least from what we found that they didn't record their own history mostly they did things about about time and the crops and what God was in power that kind of stuff but recording their own history like who was their very first king who was their favorite king um, stories that we all love to hear about Greeks and Romans and our own American culture they didn't have any of that so we're not really sure why they didn't feel it was important enough to write it down but they didn't so that's why most of what we think we know about the Mayans are all guesses now, the Mayan language started as one language, we believe, and then over time it morphed, became very diverse from one city-state to another, and beyond that, it's going to it's going to morph even more. So today, you can track 70 different languages back to the original Mayan language, and you can see how much it changed, just, just counting 1 to 10, how much it changed between these different languages and became 70 different languages. Now the end of the Mayans? We don't know. Somewhere around 900, they simply left. So the Spanish are going to come along around the 1400s and they're going to find a group of people that call themselves the Mayans, but they were not doing well. They were nearly starved to death 
and none of them could tell the story of the great Mayan Empire. It was like their brains had been wiped and we don't have the written history so we have no idea what happened to the Mayans. It's very much like in Zimbabwe. They just got up and they walked away left leaving a few remnant people behind who knew nothing could remember nothing so hmm, maybe it is the May aliens who came down and did a mind wipe who knows but the mayans again will walk away in the year 900. so let's move on to um, a much much different group of people known as the aztecs and you can see their location here is in modern day Mexico. So notice the Yucatan Peninsula with the Mayans are, is right next door. So these guys are right next door. The Mayans are living in a uh, very lush, beautiful place, lots and lots of rain. The people of the Aztec group are living in next door neighbors, living in a very dry atmosphere. So gonna, gonna, they're gonna be very different people because of that we do still consider them part of Mesoamerica because of the crops and some of the beliefs that they had made them common enough to be part of the same Mesoamerica so they're going to be around around 1200 to 1521 which means they were not yet in existence when the majority of those Mayans got up and walked away in 900 so again they're located in a very arid or dry valley in Mexico and there you go Aztec Empire easy to see now Aztecs are different from Mayans in that they were ruled by an emperor and their emperors lived in these beautiful beautiful palaces they had many 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 wives they had servants to fan them constantly um, they were definitely set apart from the rest of their people the Mayans we kind of think their king was more of a uh, people person uh, more visible more on the same level as as the common citizen not so with the Aztec Emperor the Aztec Emperor is very high above anyone else who serves him you do not say no to the the Aztec ruler for any any reason their most feared is uh, a, an emperor by the name of Montezuma so Montezuma said that no one was wear, allowed to wear shoes around him especially not in his castle so or his palace so you had to be barefoot so that you would not annoy him or take his attention away from whatever he was doing you were to be silent you absolutely were not allowed to make eye contact with him he's considered that to be disgraceful disrespectful and you could be highly punished even murdered for even making eye contact with Montezuma so in in Mexico this begins a tradition very very different from what American people are used to and so this is one of those misunderstandings that America has about people from Mexico they learned very 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 long ago that it was disrespectful to look another person in the eye Montezuma did that he told them that so if you're from Mexico you're not going to look another person in the eye in America totally opposite if you're sincere and you mean it and you have respect for the person you're talking to you're gonna look them in the eye and it, to an American if you avert somebody's eyes like you don't want to look them in the eye you're, you're either sneaky or you're lying or some other bad thing totally opposite beliefs and culture Montezuma did that so if you meet somebody from Mexico and they don't look you in the eye it is just a difference in culture and nothing else they're not bad they're not lying they're not stealing it is Montezuma's fault so this guy was so so feared by his people that whenever you got sick like really sick where you couldn't stay out of the bathroom people believed that you had done something or said something that Montezuma did not agree with and he knew it even if he wasn't in the room and heard it or saw it he was magical enough that he knew it and he made you sick to tell you I know what you did and very often people would go to him and confess like you know hey I cheated on my wife I know that you know I've been sick for three days I'm really sorry and of course Montezuma would play along with it that's right I know that you're a 
cheater. You know, okay, I'm not going to make you sick anymore now that you've confessed. So they used to call that Montezuma's revenge. If you get a really bad case of a stomach upset and you can't leave the toilet, some people still refer to that as Montezuma's revenge. That's where it comes from because he started it and they really did believe Montezuma was taking revenge out on a person who did or said something bad and he just knew it. So scary, scary guy. If he told me not to look him in the eye, I would never look anybody in the eye again. And that's what happened. Now they had pyramids just like the Incas did. See with the stairs going up and the flat tops. Aztecs started out as a very poor and weak group. They were nomadic. Um, they couldn't do anything on their own. They had to rely on other tribes, whether it was the other tribes giving them something or if they had to steal it from the other tribes. So this nomadic group had a legend. And the legend was that they were to travel and travel and travel until they came to a, a, a spot in the earth where they saw a cactus sitting in the middle of the water. There had to be a bird on top of that cactus and the bird had to have a snake in its mouth. And when they found that, they would know that the gods were telling them, stay still, this is your home. So they searched and searched and searched and they finally found the place, Tenochtitlan, and today that location is known as Mexico City. So Mexico City is actually in the it, it has an actual lake there, believe it or not, in the middle of the desert. So here is the flag of Mexico. Notice water with a cactus, with a bird, with a snake. That's why it's on the Mexican flag. It was their legend that they were looking for to make it come true so they could sit still and stop being nomadic. So their economy, very much like the Mayans, is going to be based on agriculture. And they did, they were pretty nasty to their neighbors, uh, even more than a little bit nasty, but we'll get to that in a minute. So they forced tribute from anybody that they conquered, and they conquered everyone they could get their hands on. Um, there wasn't a lot of land to farm because again they're in a desert area so these people oh my gosh they're so 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 smart they created the idea of floating gardens remember they found the lake and so they make these little floating gardens that actually waters itself and you had them tied together with ropes so you didn't actually have to go out into the islands you could if you wanted to take a boat out there and go between the islands and get off and and you know weed the crops or whatever but you could pull the pull them to you with these ropes and you could move them out and bring another one in and so really you could stay in one spot and and take care of most of the crops just pulling them in and pushing them back out when you're done weeding them ingenious and here is a better picture of those floating gardens so notice that they're big enough um, some of them that you could get out get off the boat and it's like being on your own little piece of land and you can you know reap it sow it weed it whatever and this is what they have even today in modern day Mexico so they're not these big giant um, land tracks like they used to be when the Aztecs were around but they still have floating gardens and they still grow their food that way so it has stuck around now the Aztecs were also polytheistic and they have many many temples that were built uh, to in dedication to those gods they also believed in personal bloodletting not with the shaft through the tongue and the genitals um, it was a much more <laughs> much more delicate procedure if you did it on yourself um, kind of like uh, scratches type thing uh, self mutilation kind of thing but not to the point where you're driving shafts through places that you should never do that to um, so they do have personal bloodletting but more than that they had massive massive sacrifices so they would take you to the top, they, they would capture people, and they would take all the prisoners that they wanted to, and sometimes it was a thousand a day, sometimes it was only ten a day, it just depended on, on you know, what they were celebrating that day. They would take you to the top of the tower, and they would crack your chest open, and pull your heart out 
while you're still alive and they would hold the heart up for people to see it sometimes they would burn the heart in a fire sometimes the emperor would eat the heart it just depended now according to Aztec belief the hearts of brave warriors were the best ones that would appease the gods the most so they would actually get other tribes around them to to take part in uh, like a, a battle with them and it wasn't really for them to take land or goods or anything like that it was the emperor and his men that were judging uh, who the best warriors of the opposing tribe was and they would stand back and say oh look at that Bob guy over there he's a brave warrior his heart will really ap appease the gods so let's get him so they weren't just depleting the population of neighboring tribes they were depleting the best of the best of those tribes and so if, if you want an idea of what it was like and it, it was a, it was a party it was a party especially on the days when they did a thousand of them they would chop the heart out then chop the head off they would roll the head down one side of the pyramid and they had these guys at the bottom called netters and those netters would catch the heads and if you caught the most heads by the end of the day you won a prize the body would be thrown down the other side of the pyramid where people couldn't see it and then you had slaves on that other side that would carry the bodies to the to the edge of the town and throw them in a pit when the pit got full they burned it so very 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 barbaric they were not well loved at all by the people around them because like I said they're taking away all their best warriors so um, there is a video clip that shows it pretty pretty well if you will click on not click on it you're gonna have to freeze and type it in um, you may have seen it I'm not gonna give away what movie it is but look and look at this clip and it'll give you a really good idea you'll even see the netters you'll see the partying going on um, so you take a look at that and we'll, I'm gonna keep talking on the next uh, picture so Aztecs use the same calendar as the Mayans and they use similar glyphs now did the Aztecs think there was a different God for every single day no they did not but they used the calendar for crops and cycles of the moon and things like that to to plant their crops so they're not as dedicated to the many 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 gods as the Mayans would have been they have much fewer gods and uh, much more simplified simplified glyphs as well now they were always in battle always 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 but again it's not for land most often it's to get the bravest hearts to give to the gods now this place had over a thousand temples dedicated to a different god so where the Mayans had a million gods they have a lot too they've got at least a thousand but again we don't think that they believed that there was a God for every single solitary thing think of all the new inventions that we've got in the world you know uh, internet anything that has to do with the internet any new uh, um, media type of thing new phones all this stuff you would have to have a God for everything that gets invented if you were a Mayan and believed in that that's a lot of gods so the Aztec trimmed the fat a little bit we know they had at least a thousand now it was home to as many as 15 million people which is huge and give you giving you a good example the whole state of West Virginia at 1.8 million Virginia at 8 million California you see all of them have more than 15 million those are the only ones this little teeny tiny place that we now call Mexico City had 15 million people all the way back in this time period and they fed them and they fed them well that is that is a an impossible feat but there you go now how does this mighty mighty group of people come to an end it starts with King Charles V of Spain he is going to send a very good friend of his by the name of Cortez over to this part of the world because he heard there was gold here so if you notice where Cor Cortez landed over here in the Gulf of Mexico he landed with a bunch of men they got off the ship and the men started to get nervous this place looked a little bit crazy and they were afraid of it and so he burned every ship except one so he could get back home when it was time he told his men we're doing this start marching or I'll drown you 
So they started marching. You can see that they went through a whole lot of other places before they got to Mexico City. So along the way, they stopped and they conversed and they learned from each one of the tribes and more that you see here on the screen. And they found out that the Aztecs had a very ancient myth. They, were, they believed that there was a god that was going to appear to them one day dressed all in white, very pale figure, and he was going to take over the Aztecs and make them the most magnificent group of people that ever lived. He was going to give them a utopia, a perfect world. And if this creature showed up, you were to open the gate, allow them in, the emperor was to step to the side, and 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 that would be the end of that. This this god is going to take control. So what does Cortez do? He dresses up like that god. They powdered him from head to toe. He dressed in pure white. He looks like a god when he arrives at the gate. And guess what? They open the door and they let him in. Okay, so here's the name of the god. I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. But there it is. We're going to call him Quezzy. So Quezzy was supposed to be the Messiah and Cortez again he tricks them he gets through the gate and once he's fully in there they actually are having a celebration so he allows the the Aztecs to drink a little bit he forbids his men from drinking but he allows them to, the the um, Aztecs to drink so they're a little bit uh, well tipsy when things start going bad and all of a sudden Cortez tells his men you know go for it start killing people and so they do so 30 percent of the Aztecs were wiped out with this bloody bloody awful battle another 30 percent was wiped out by smallpox because that 30 percent is of, of death is blood and mayhem and now you've got blood on blood European blood infected with smallpox the Europeans don't feel it don't know it don't get sick but the Aztecs do. So you've got 60% of the Aztec population wiped out, including their newest emperor, Montezuma II, gone. So they, they, Aztecs basically just fall apart after this. And there is supposedly what Cortez looked like dressed up as this god. A little, little bit too much color. Um, he would have been all white, but that is a pretty good rendition of the headdress and stuff like that. Isn't that crazy that he did that? And that is supposed to be that god as well and it's one of the places that you can find if you go to the Aztec ruins, one of the statues that you can find. Now they will surrender and the city is going to perish. Of course it's going to come back as Mexico City. Montezuma's sons are all wiped out Cortez marries, uh, marries Montezuma's daughter Isabel and we know that she had a baby with him. Now he married her so was, was it love? I mean we don't know but he married Isabel. They had a child and then Isabel just kind of vanishes. Like we don't know what happened to her. She could have lived to be 105 but there's no more mention of her in the history books or the child so we have no idea what happened to them but they did have Montezuma's sons slaughtered. The last tribe that we're going to look at are the Incans or the Inca. They came to be at almost the exact same time as the Aztecs only in a different part of the world. They're going to be in South America so they are in the Andes Mountains and you can see that highlighted here. Very different group of people. They are far away from Mesoamerica so they're going to have some very different ways of looking at the world. Now the Incas were also ruled by an emperor so the only one that has kings is the Mayans. The emperor is believed to be the direct descendant of a sun god so you didn't have very many people that qualified as able to be an emperor. We're guessing they had about 16 million people but in that 16 million people only 11 families were believed to have that bloodline so you're very limited on who can actually be the emperor. 
now there were so many people and and it's through the andes mountains so they're all very very far away from each other but you are supposed to directly listen to the emperor everybody has to follow the same rules as everybody else so how do you do that the emperor decided that he would divide everybody up based on the number of 10 so you have at, at every level where there was a 10 at 10 at 100 at 1000 at 10,000 there was a leader for each one of those tens and that leader would report to the leader above him so the guy let me clarify it a little bit so the guy that is in charge of a 10 a single group of 10 people he reports to the guy who is in charge of a hundred people and then the guy who's in charge of the hundred people goes to the guy who's in charge of a thousand and tells him about the ten and his own one hundred and then it goes all the way up to ten thousand by the time that you tell the guy in charge of a ten thousand group of people everything that's happening then only a few people have to go and talk directly to the emperor and so it's very very organized I'm not doing the best job explaining it just know it's based on tens so you have these specific specific people at the head of these ten groups that are supposed to go and talk to the Emperor and that way the Emperor knew everyone knew all the same rules they're abiding by the same laws they're paying the same taxes like everything is the same across all of Incan territory pretty ingenious now Indian architecture is absolutely amazing so they do have terrace cities um, that's nothing new we've already talked about that it keeps things from uh, mudslides they also knew how to build things that were completely indestructible so they had these these stones that they fit together and if you look at them they're chiseled to fit together perfectly there's no mortar there's nothing holding them together except the weight of the wall itself and it's it's indestructible so I have another friend that has gone to the to Incan uh, territory and he said he's standing atop this big this big mountain where it's super windy but when you stood on the side of the wall that you know other the side opposite where the wind was blowing you couldn't feel any wind coming through the cracks of those stones at all I mean it's a perfect puzzle fit just incredible they also were fantastic at building roads so all in all throughout all of the Andes there is 14,000 miles of roads that were built by the Incans still in use today and notice that because it is really really steep and rough terrain you can't just do a road down or up it had to be a zigzag pattern so look at this zigzag pattern on the side that's not a very far distance but you have to do it that way because if you didn't you'd fall off the side of a mountain so it's kind of it's kind of like terracing the road like you terraced the city or terraced your your farmland now if you can see the um, map here that's all the roads that they built so you could get from one end to the other of this empire pretty easily on an Aztec road all zigzags their most famous city is called Machu Picchu and it really truly is in the middle of nowhere on the top of a mountain it hasn't been uh, very long ago since we discovered this because the way that it's built it blends into the environment and it is very very high up most of the time if a plane was flying over it there would have been cloud cover so look at look at this Machu Picchu you can't tell that there's something there I mean it just happened that a guy was flying by and it happened to be a clear day there were no clouds and he happened to look at it right and was like hey there's something down there so it is very 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 high up so if you go there without preparation and that friend of mine had he went to Machu Picchu and for three days they had to take um, uh, certain kind of pills and they had to do certain exercises to prepare them to go this high up and if you don't have that then when you go to the top of Machu Picchu you get dizzy you have hallucinations so we think that it, it could possibly have been a place that people went to talk to the gods and so if they had hallucinations while they were there well that seems fitting that you know the gods were speaking to them so it could be like a holy place 
it may also be the place that the emperor went to get away so it could have been like his private little resort away from the masses either one we don't know those are both guesses too um, but it is a really cool place now their economy is very different than anybody else's it's built on a welfare system and that welfare system took care of everyone if you were sick or old you couldn't work you were born with some kind of deficiency if you need help you were taken care of it is a perfect welfare system most people were equal and any profits made went to the government and then the government used those profits to feed and house people does that sound socialist or communist to you agriculture was huge and it was done by terracing like the Mayans everybody grew for each other again we're talking socialism here it's more socialism than communism because communism is totally classless and in socialism you have that small elite group at the top and this definitely was the emperor was elite so it's more of a socialist system um, but it it wasn't looked at in an evil way like we tend to look at socialism people were taken care of they were well fed um, you farmed together that's what most people did is for a living you farmed and then you shared all the food so there's no proof of any hatred towards the government for this type of, of uh, life people seemed to uh, be pretty happy as an Incan and this is just some of the beautiful beautiful terraced land in the Andes now they believed in many gods and they also adopted gods of people that they conquered if they liked one they're hey I like that God that's really cool we're gonna start using that so in order to appease gods they also had to have some some type of sacrifice they didn't do a lot of personal bloodletting and they didn't kill a whole lot of people that they found in warfare they used a lot of animals uh, as sacrifices so that's different than the Mayans and the Aztecs but when they needed to sacrifice a human because something bad happened or was about to happen those sacrifices were children and they were children of the rulers so if your child was was picked to be the sacrifice that was considered a very very great honor for your child to be the one so here is uh, one that we have uncovered and it's very 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 cold in the Andes so these children are very preserved so looking at this child she's one of the first ones that we found and she's so intact look at you can you can see every every little detail of her face uh, we believe that the children were there was a there was a great celebration the children were well fed for about a year before they were to be sacrificed and on the day that they were to be sacrificed uh, clips of their hair were cut off for the parents to save and then they basically gave the children drugs that put them to sleep and they took them to a pit that had been dug and they sat them in the pit in a circle very often not always but very often um, facing one another and the they were they were placed very lovingly and then they were buried so the children never felt anything they were buried in their sleep and they just never woke up here's a couple others that we found mostly see they're very 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 young this is the oldest one that we found it's it's assumed that she was about 15 years old still very very intact we're not really sure why um, she's so much older than all the others if there was something special about her that you know and maybe something really bad happened that they felt they had to sacrifice somebody that was more special than any of the others we don't know but you can see um, you can see every little feature of her face and she travels the world um, with uh, muse different museum exhibits that travel so she has actually been in, in uh, North America before I didn't get to see her but she has been in North America before so Incans never had a writing system 
their their traditions were told or their their history was told orally but they did have a mass system and it's not one that we fully understand uh it's known as quippy and it is a series of rops 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 a series of ropes and knots uh, again called quippy we don't fully understand it but this is what it looks like now the Incans like the Maya and the Aztecs had two very accurate calendars. We, we know that they used one for farming. We're not really sure what the other one was used for, but there are two in existence. These guys never discovered the wheel and it's believed that, well, why would you use a wheel if you live on a mountain and you have to worry about making a scissor road? If you, if you had something on wheels, wouldn't it get away from you? So it makes sense that they never discovered the wheel because they couldn't use one on a mountainside. They were great at building bridges. Some are still in use today. So here's one. No thank you. I would not cross that. But it is an original one, original one from the Incans and it still exists. Now we are in America are not the best at building bridges, um, at least not in our early eras, in the early 1900s, late 1800s. And so in 1877, this rope bridge was discovered and there was an architect that decided to use that, that sketch of the 1877 Incan Bridge to build the George Washington Bridge, which was a suspension bridge still there today over the Hudson River Valley. And it is very, very, very similar. Prior to this, suspension bridges didn't work in America. Very often they would be caught in a crosswind. They would flip over, drop people and cars right off of them. And so, but once we started using the Incan version of it, it worked. So there you go. They're still, they're still so what's going to cause these guys to end? They only end a few years after the Aztecs do. And again, it's the fault of Charles V. So we already know about Cortez. He went in and took the Aztecs over by tricking them. Pizarro was a very good friend of both Cortez and Charles. So they conspired together that, hey, there's another group out there called the Incans that probably have a whole lot of money. Let's go get them. Now, Pizarro wasn't as tricky as Cortez. Pizarro just walked right in and kidnapped the emperor out of out, out of Hopa kidnapped him and said we want a room full of gold if you give us a room full of gold we will give you your emperor back so they did they gave him a room full of gold literally and what did he do he killed Atahopa. he actually strangled him to death he gave him a choice do you want to be burned alive or do you want me to strangle you and he said strangle me and so then Pizarro and 150 of his men very easily defeated the Incans who numbered of at least 80,000 in their military troops because think about it think about it they did not have they had no one that knew what was what was supposed to be done except that Emperor remember it's run as a socialist system so if you have no one at the top to tell you what to do the whole system fell apart and for them to lose out of in such a violent and and swift way everything just crumbled and so eventually Pizarro will get his they he's at a dinner many 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 years later he invites men who he thinks is his best friend he's an old man by this time and um in the middle of dinner one of the men who was not really his friend he'd been lying to him got up and stabbed Pizarro through the throat and so he gets his in the end but too late too sad the Incans are already gone so let's review real quick we've got the Aztecs who are in middle America the Mayans on the Yucatan and the Incas living in the Andes so all of them are going to end up being murdered by Spanish people of course the Aztecs and the Incans are done purposely by Cortez and Pizarro both associated with the King of Spain Charles V and then the Mayans we did, the Spanish didn't really kill them off but the people that were left when they did appear you know remember they disappeared in 900 so when the Spanish did invade there was a lot of a, a lot of bloodshed um, so you can say the Spanish k killed some of them but not all of them so I know that's confusing so we're just gonna say we're done we are done with the Americas and hope you learned a lot very very interesting group of people right